Welcome back, Hookaholics. Foul mouth fishing. It's here. My February 2022 MTB Elite. So uh, let's crack into it and see what we got this month from uh, Mystery Tackle Box. Howie? So, this showed up at the doorstep today, late afternoon. So, uh, my MTB for February, happy Valentine's Day to all you out there. Um, let's see what we got in this month's elite version of the Mystery Tackle Box. This is going to be the only package that I get uh, for 2022. Uh, I shut down my Angler's Hall. Well, they shut down Angler's Hall on me. Uh, I never quit them. They just stopped supplying. And, quite frankly... I don't have time for that. Fish Vault didn't pass the mustard. Uh, they didn't quite give me value for my $150 a month. So uh, I'm just going to stick with something that I know, even though I do know that the majority of the baits that are going to come to me are baits that I already have in supply and probably don't need triplicates and quadruplicates of. Um, that said, um, yeah, let's see what we got for February 2022. So we got our Dibbles Digest. It's a booklet this year, or this month. Uh, Freaky Fish Day, why we use downsized spinner baits. I do know that. Uh, getting line for big pound fish and trout inline spinners. You guys are going for trout right now. Um, inline spinners, obviously uh, trout magnets and the dough baits. Although I highly suggest if you're going to use dough bait uh, for trout, it's trout you're going to keep. Uh, they do tend to inhale the hooks and then they don't typically survive. Um, rarely, when they suck in the dough baits, do you feel the bite initially, and then by the time you do set the hook, oftentimes it's too late. Um, ooh, looks like we're getting... AcmeTackle.com seems to have some new baits coming out. Hmm. Okay. I'll look into that later. Um, the Shikoshi Bug... Uh, four ways to better handle fish. That's good. Use a net. Avoid excessive handling. Always. Shorten the fight. I'm one of those people uh, like Tactical Bassin. Again, I am not an influencer. I don't intend to ever be an influencer. Uh, I'm very judgmental of the things that I get. I do spend a lot more than I expect the average angler to spend, especially when you have obligations outside of your pastime or passion, depending on how strongly you feel about fishing. Um, but influencers, it's a fine line because a lot of times what you don't realize on this side of that camera, you've got a guy who caught a fish eight, 10 minutes ago, and he's been playing around with this, this fish to get a thumbnail photo for Instagram, another picture for, you know, for TikTok, uh, all this crap he's, he's, he's doing a short video that he's putting up on his Facebook page, and then he's going to spout over the YouTube video that he makes. I don't do that. I catch a fish, I hook it, it comes to me, the end. I might have it on video if I'm going to have a, uh, if I don't have my camera with me, my GoPro on my chest or whatever you, I might have the my cell phone on my hip, snap a photo, it goes in the water. I don't take the time to, to make more than one or two photos. That's it. I don't post the photos like uh, like it's some sort of clout. I don't care. Anybody can catch a good fish. It's more posterity for me than anything else. Um, but the influencers that spend all their time manipulating and getting a new angle and then they take the boat to a different side of the shore so that the sun is facing the fish and not in the eye of the camera and all that which goes into like movie production and things like that. I don't have time for that. I want to get the fish in. I want to get the fish unhooked and I want to get the fish returned safely so that the next person down the road can catch that fish when it's gained another pound or two or me when it's gained another three or four pounds in the future. Um, 
So there's that. And don't fish when it's too hot. Also, now during the winter when you're fishing, learn the process of fizzing if you're, if you're fishing deep, deep water um, and, and be atoned to that. If you're going to play a fish at any time, during the winter is the time to play a fish. And that is to bring it up to the surface slowly, giving it time for that swim bladder to exhaust itself and let the fish acclimate as it's coming up through the water column. Or have a needle on board and fizz the fish when you get it to the surface uh, so that it doesn't do, you know, irreparable harm. All right, that aside, good advice. Thank you, Catchco and, Sh and uh, Mystery Tackle Box for putting things like that in these little pamphlets. I wish more people would read these pamphlets. I do think there's a, a lot of information. Beyond that, let's get down to the, the really important thing, our card. So today we have two, four, six, eight, nine items in our What's in the Box card for our Mystery Tackle Box Elite. Let's start at the top and work our way down as we always do. And just like always, I'm going to have the uh, item description, price, and timestamp for when I talk about the item. So if you want, you just skip to that timestamp. You can be on, be beyond this, this spouting for the last five minutes about fizzing fish. <laughs> First up, from Z-Man, Cross Eyes Chatterbait. One of the better chatterbaits, underrated, and many times better than even the jackhammer. That is the Cross Eyes, specifically designed for going where you really want to put your chatterbait. So the key behind the cross eyes, it's got two nylon uh, weed guards on it. It's got a slightly wider uh, designed, at least I believe, wider designed blade. Uh, the head is specifically designed and shaped. It is perfect for running cover, cover where all the fish lie. So where the jackhammer really excels open water over grass lines, drawing in the big fish from up in the grass, this guy, is probably your best bet as a bank angler uh, or fishing laydowns, wood, brush piles, uh, tall grass, milfoil. Um, this thing gets through that with no problem. This bounces off of a log or a tree. As long as you like caught it between the notch of a tree and the V, you, you can get this guy out uh, without any real problem. So we got a 3 8 and this is the chili dog color. So... It's primarily green pumpkin with a red, a uh, little bit of a red in there. Let you see that in the package. It's mostly a dark green pumpkin brown with that little red hit on the bottom. Awesome. Another good substitute chili dog for if you can't get a hold of uh, the, the uh, fire crawl color. So that's a good one right there. And this is $9.99. Again, cheaper than the jackhammer. So for $10, you get something that is more four-wheel drive off-road in the thick of it um, with less chance of losing it compared to the $20, uh, you know, jackhammer. But there's a, per a perfect place and time for each one of the chatterbait designs. Micro, the Stealth, uh, obviously the Cross Eyes, the Jackhammer, and the Standard, and the Elite, they're all got their own time and place, and I suggest learn where they're best played, where the best role for each chatterbait is, so that you're not throwing money in the trash can constantly losing uh, just because the jackhammer is the thing doesn't mean it's the thing you should be throwing in that particular situation. Next up from Strike Pro. Strike Pro's Beakster. Strike Pro's Beakster. Jerkbait. I think I have these. So from the tournament grade series, this is the Beakster. It's a 90 in IU. I use that great gill color. Great minnow gill profile. Dark rich uh, brown back kind of like an amber in that in that transparent color. That's awesome. Jerkbait time, of course. Um, and this guy is uh, 9 sixteenths, or 3 and 9 sixteenths, and it weighs 5 sixteenths of an ounce, dives 4 and a half to 6 feet. Perfect, perfect. Uh, 9.99 for that. So two back-to-back, -back, roughly $10 baits. Next, and you're going to see this is heavy in all the upcoming Mystery Tackle Box stuff. Guggen Squad's Recon. Guggen Squad, Guggen Squad. Another bait to go in my big box of Guggen stuff. So, Guggen Squad's Recon. This is that citrus shad color that they they call it. What do they call this? Uh, Chartreuse Blue Black. Chartreuse Blue Black. 
Now, I, I big shout out to Bass Boxing Outdoors. He gave me that blueback chrome silver color. Again, my favorite. Chartreuse blueback is a more common color that I've seen in swim baits and uh, glides. So he gave me something that I feel is very unique. I'm looking forward to catching a monster on that. Good color, dirty stained water. Um, I go for more natural colors in clear water. This dives 8 to 12 feet and is 2 and 3 quarter inches long, 5 eighths of an ounce for the recon. Uh, everybody knows what these are. Guggen Squad, you know. $7.99. Next, Guggen Squad again. This is the Flat Banger. Guggen Squad's Flat Banger. So another crankbait. This one was, I think, a little shallower, right? Yeah. So the Flat Banger, this is only 3 to 6 feet. Uh, it's two and a half inches long and half of an ounce in an awesome craw pattern. Definitely go pre-spawn craw. Now, I've talked before, the craw patterns that I've thrown now, um, February, March, into April, May, I go for the green, the dark browns, the root beer color craw patterns. I wait to hold out the bright, brilliant orange, red craw patterns into end of May, June, July, August, that's when I throw those big, bright, fire red engine colors. Now, I know you can catch fish on red all year long. This is true. I just tend to follow the patterns, the molting patterns, the blue, the mossy green and root beer colors, and then lead into the lighter tan browns and then the bright oranges and yellows, and then back into those more mud brown colors, into the dark colors as it goes back into the fall transition. Um, that's just me trying to match that hatch during the seasonal changes and molting patterns of my local waters and the crawfish that I uh, happen to see in, in the waters that I fish. $7.99 for the flat banger, $7.99 again for that recon. Uh, next up, 13 Fishing, which I just got a new rod and reel for. Uh, so 13 Fishing's bubble butt. Bubble butt. So we got a soft plastic. Soft plastic. Uh, this is called collard green. <laughs> I, I don't eat collard greens. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that. But we've got ourselves a very fish stinky squid smelling um, salt cured donkey sauce, which is that that squid scent, in a really different, different worm. Okay, so let's bring this forward. So they're calling it collard green. I would call it a green pumpkin slash watermelon it's a little bit lighter than a green pumpkin but certainly deeper and darker than a watermelon uh, black flake pepper it's got a big bulbous tail that i'm sure will float but what you can't get is the shape see that that's a hexagon one two three four five six sides i think Let's see two four six sides Six sides. It's got a rounded tip, which is great for offering this up against, um, you know, your jig heads because you get a nice, or a bullet weight. Perfectly cupped to fit that bullet weight for Texas rigging. I like the fact that the head is round. Then the main body goes to that hexagon. Uh, it's got an egg sac kind of keyed out with two little carvings. If you wanted to go wacky rig, that's interesting. I do like that size, that shape. Uh, we've got the, it's five, five inches and it weighs a quarter ounce. I'll be interested to see how well this works. I'm definitely going to throw these, and if they are a winner, I'm going to pick up a bunch of these in different colors. That's for sure. Uh, not sponsored by 13 Fishing. I just have grown to like a lot of their products that are coming out. Uh, that one, $6.49 for the pack. And there are, how many in a pack? Let's see. Uh, Two, four, six, two, four, six, eight. Eight in a pack. That's not bad. All right. From Weston. The Weston Shad Tees Slim. Weston. Weston. Okay. A uh, little three-inch drop shot finesse bait right there. Little uh, nice little pattern there, like a shiner. Minnow pattern. Not bad. Uh, these Westons obviously are going to be expensive because it's Weston. Um, they are $5.99. You get a four-pack of these little guys. Nice little boot tail. Not complaining about that. Clamshell packaging. It's always good to have. Let's see what are these guys. Again, I do like that, you know, the candy, green pumpkin candy back 
with that pearl belly, clear see-through. It does have a hook slot in the belly and a resting place to texpose on the head and some pretty cool little eyes. Let's see if I can get it to focus in on the bait, not me. There you go. Little eyes on there. Not bad. Not bad. Definitely, that's a good bait to throw on the drop shot. That's a great bait to throw behind a little tiny micro swim jig. Um, very cool. Very cool. So uh, the Westons, $5.99. Three to go. Another Guggen Squad. We got Guggen Squad's Juicy Jig. This is their, uh, this is a peanut butter and jelly. Oh, Green Pumpkin. Okay, Green Pumpkin. Uh, for, yeah, Green Pumpkin. Three-eighths ounce. It's their casting jig. They call them the juices. Um, so, not bad. Another Guggen Squad item. That's three in a box. Three in one box. Like I said, Catchco pushing a lot of Guggen Squad stuff. $4.99. Be on the lookout. The Guggen Squad themselves are coming out with a lot more baits. So uh, I think Catchco is trying to empty inventory and they're going to start bringing in the more new designs because that's the way that everything does. iCast, they push the newest stuff, push it, push it, push it. Old stuff goes to the wayside. And there's a ton, Retro Bassin, big shout out. There's a ton of old baits way back in the day you can't just get a hold of anymore. And I think that's because of the veracity of pushing the, the most modern and new thing out there. Raking in the money on a cash grab for that. And then leaving quality baits and designs to the wayside. Because you just want to be part of that social you know, network of the newest is the best and everything else gets forgotten. $4.99 for that jig. Uh, next to last, Lake Forks Trophy. We've got some more little micro lures. These are awesome. Now this, this is going in my, my ultralight pack. These are segmented, tiny, tiny bobble tails. Look at that tiny little pintail with that little tiny ball on the end there. And they're segmented into three segments, head, midsection, and tail. That's freaking awesome. Awesome. Garlic and salt. Garlic scented and salt impregnated. Uh, you get a ton of them. A ton of these guys. It's a full bag, including the one still in my hand. That's awesome. Awesome. Now, here you go for ice fishing, um, crappy fishing, pan fishing. There you go. And for this big bag, $3.49. Lake Fork Trophy Lures. They call this the Baby Shad. The Baby Shad. And they don't have a color. Oh, Black Chartreuse Silver Flake. Two and a quarter inches. Not bad. And finally, the hook that caught my fish last year. Uh, Spear Point. It's performance hooks. We've got some three aughts and a three pack. For two dollars and ninety-nine, uh, two dollars and ninety cents. Excuse me. Spear points. Great part about spear point is that shape right there, that little bend that they put, and that little cup in the end. That once that hook penetrates, you slip the fish slips down, keeps that hook point out, and they get caught in that notch right there along the bony part, bony plates of their mouth, and it's hard for the fish to back out. Even on a shake, they might get it up into the into this flat section, but to Back all the way off past the barb is nearly, in, you know, nearly improbable. Um, it's it's awesome, awesome. So they give you the EWG shape and everything, but with that that proprietary shape that that just pins the fish a lot better than a lot of hooks that I've seen on the market. I've actually decided that uh, this company, believe it or not, is one of those that I'm I'm putting a lot of stake into. I do still like my Gamagatsus. I still like my owners. Uh, for certain applications, but for my general Texas rigging, um, I'm going spear points now. So, uh, not that it's expensive company, which it's not. Two dollars ninety cents. They're selling this three pack. It's more or less a teaser to get you to buy, but uh, not bad. Not bad. I do like that design. So, what do you think of those items? We got the hooks, which obviously don't fit much. Maybe the worms. You could Texas rig the worms with the spear points. There you go. You got two really good drop shot baits in uh, in the Lake Fork and the Westons. You got yourself two great jigs. You got a bladed jig 
and a bottom tracking jig for, for casting. Not bad. You got two cranks, shallow depth, mid depth. You got your three to six foot and your eight to 12. Obviously deep divers go, you know, 24 foot, 12, you know, 16 foot, etc. And for that, if you can get it down there, um, you know, you've got the four to six foot floating jerk bait. I always go for floating jerk baits, jerk them down. If they get hung up, you let off, give it some slack. They have a tendency to rise back out of whatever they might've been hung into. And uh, you can get your bait back without losing the money. And finally, the most important part of all of this, and something that I think fits me perfectly. In fact, yeah, yeah, that suits me better. A little, uh, little goat. Yeah, that's, that's about right. Well, so, uh, fits my sticker. What do you think? Goat? Yeah, maybe? No. Okay, well, I can still dream, right? <laughs> to all of you out there, I appreciate you hanging out with me, spending a little time, checking out my, uh, my little wares here for my catch coat order for my mystery tackle box monthly. Any of these speak to you? Any of these baits that you have experience with that aren't any good? Have you, has anybody out there fished the 13 fishings, um, bubble butt, uh, worms or those, uh, those really cool segmented, excuse me, get down here, the segmented lake forks. Has anybody fished these ice fishing, um, crappy fishing, um, you know, anything like that. I'd love your input. Is there any lures similar to this that you fished? Give me the input. Let me uh, let me check them out because I'm always looking to expand on uh, on what is out there in the market. And as always, from me to you, um, tight lines, stay warm. Springs around the corner. The feed bag is on for fish. I mean, we're we're moving out. It's going to start getting warmer and warmer as the weeks progress on. So pay attention to your forecast as the days stay warm. The water's going to warm up slowly, and that's when you're going to catch those monsters in the early spring. And then you'll, you know, carry on until the days get a little too hot, and it all lulls down. And then come fall, they go back into that feeding frenzy after the spawn going into the winter, and you might catch your PB then as well. But these are the times to start fishing for those personal bests. Again, take care, peace, tight lines, and I'll catch you on the next cast. Peace, alcoholics.